Hi everybody, welcome back to Armour of Forger and in this video I'm going to attempt to address some of the problems that may well be causing your server not to work, your Armour of Forger community server, whether that be for PC, uh, Xbox or our new PlayStation brethren who have joined the Armour of Forger family with mods as well. Um, now, I'm recording this video on the 26th of May 2025, so mods for PlayStation have only been available for a few days, and a lot of the problems we're seeing now are simply probably because of the hammering that the um, mod servers and the Armour Forger workshop is taking in terms of downloading stuff. Okay, so I'm sure over the next couple of weeks things will calm down, bugs will get sorted out, and everything should start to turn back to normal but in the meantime if you fancy having a crack at trying to figure out why your server isn't working i'm going to go through some go through some basics i'm probably going to miss some stuff off but who who knows i might actually get it right so let's let's first just kind of have a look at a server now i'm using nitrado as an example because they're pretty cheap they're easy to use and they pay me a percentage if you use my link to go there and take out a server which is very nice of you to do that but the core of any Armour of Forger server is the config file or the config.json um, and it's critical that you get this right in terms of how you put the mods into it, how you put the scenario into it and the fact that you check it as well for what we would call syntax. So when I'm talking about syntax when it comes to a, a, a file like this it, it's it's like the spelling and the punctuation together. We tend to call that the syntax. And it is incredibly easy to get the syntax wrong. For example, say in this section here, which is about the mods, let's say I, I added an extra comma there, or I deleted that comma there and didn't have it. The config.json wouldn't work, and your server may well go into... Um, a, a death spiral of just restarting all of the time. So one of the first things I want to talk about is is how do you get the right format for the mods and how do you get you know which ones do you need um, and for scenarios as well. So what we're going to do we're just going to jump over to now this is the PC version of um, Armor of Forger. So let's say we want to add some mods to our server. Um, what we could do is if we go into the workshop here. And then we go into the mod manager and you've already downloaded the mods that you want but let's say we wanted the mod for the shaytac 408 sniper rifle now when we activate this on the left hand side and we bring it over here it will also activate its dependencies so without these dependencies this mod won't work and then they make it very easy all you do is you click on this a jigsaw piece here and click on the json and that is the code that we would add to our server how easy is that? So we can just copy to clipboard. Now, obviously, if you're on... Actually, I don't think... I'm not sure if PlayStation or Xbox come up with this screen. So that really is unfortunate. It's very difficult to do this when you're away from away from PC. But we would simply copy that to the clipboard. And that would give us the code we needed. So if we go over to our server, for example, your mod section would probably look something like that. Okay. And so what we do, we would paste them in. Now the syntax or the spelling to kind of think about is if we look at it, so you've got the mods. So you've got your first mod there, the bacon suppressors. Notice that comma there. You've got your second com mod there. Notice that comma there. But then the third and final mod, it doesn't have a comma after it. So that's something to look at. Also, if you have a look at these version numbers, when you copy from the game, it copies the version number across. Now. I think the best practice is not to use version numbers because if you do and you don't update your config file when there's an update to one of these mods you're going to force your players to download an older version of the mod um, which isn't too bad on PC or with smaller mods but on bigger mods and on console that can be a bit of a problem it's a bit of a pain in the bottom so you get rid of the version IDs and you would save save that. Now, the catch though, and this is another reason why your server might go into a restart loop, is it could be that certain mods only work with certain versions. So let's say the person who made the Shaytac 408 mod, let's say they make it and then they stop updating it. But 
the person who makes the bacon suppressors mod is a different person and they keep updating their mod so it could be that the shaytac mod which relies on bacon suppressors mod only works with an older version of the bacon suppressors mod so in that case you would use the numbers so be aware of that as well it could be that your server is in a restart mode because you're having some something wrong like that the basic um fault finding thing to do is to remove mods so if your server's not working remove the mods and then restart it and see what's happening happening now as far as the scenarios go what you can do is you can change the scenario if you know them already um, and obviously we would save um, but what we can also do if you go into uh, general here and then we scroll down a bit we can change the scenario ID here as well and once we save that that should make a change to our config file .json here now no matter which and what changes you make in this file what we should always do is we should always check it so if you download it like that and download it to your local PC you want to go somewhere like uh, this JSON formatter and validator and I'll put a link to this in the description below this video because what you can do is you can browse for this go to downloads config.json we open that and then we can process that and it says it's valid make sure that you've got fixed JSON unticked so it doesn't fix it automatically and then you can just say okay um, my syntax is correct there always could be a problem with a conflicting mod or a mod that doesn't work anymore or something like that but if you validate it like that at least it means that your your spelling is going to be uh, going to be going to be okay and your punctuation is going to be okay that uh, that way it's very because the config files aren't very big it's also easy to see mistakes and the most common one i see is commas missed out or brackets accidentally deleted that way okay so what we do i just want to jump out of the game because the game kind of gets in the gets in the way a bit when we're trying to do these videos so let's escape out of that so we're back here right excellent so let's jump back over to here so there's a there's our config file now at the moment as well there's an error uh, that's happening with nitrado or there was let's have a look see if it's still here here we go we've got this error at the moment so what nitrado was saying is modded scenarios are unavailable to select at this time because the workshop api returned an error so what this means is if you're not playing game master or conflict or that uh one where you have to go and kill the guy i can't remember so, um if you're playing a modded scenario like a modded single player scenario multiple scenario it could be that it's not working because there's a problem with the armor of forger workshop so bear that in mind as well and and if that's an error that's happening well there's nothing you can do about it um, and it's you know it's going to be going to be a problem that way other things to look at now we talked about how um, when you go into the game and you select the mods in your workshop it will show you the dependencies but sometimes it might be an idea just to come and have a look at the armor of forger workshop and look at the mod you want to install and just check out which dependencies should be on it because there may be things that you weren't aware of like there so kunar province um, we've got like that um, and you can go into any of them um, see some some mods don't have any dependencies like that which is which is very good as well and the other thing you can do on these screens as well is you can look at when it was last modified so for example this mod here with better tracers well it wasn't it wasn't last modified until september last year now armor forger has had quite a few updates since then so there may be a chance that this isn't compatible anymore now i'm not saying it isn't because it's probably fine better traces because it's a nice simple mod but some of the more complicated ones might be so again that would be another reason to take that mod out of your mod list and and run your server without it restart your server without it and see if it fires up that way um, another thing you can do as well is if you know there's a particular server that's running a particular mod that you want to install and you're up wondering well how how do they run that mod? what do they run it with one of the things you can do is you go to battle metrics and you can search for, through the armor of forger server so in this particular case let's say i want to run the wcs mods um what i could do is i can search for wcs like this and i'll put a link to this in the description below the video as well and we can bring up all of the servers that are running w that have wcs in the title which is a bit of a clue that they're running the worst case scenario mods and you can click on them and then you've got all of the mods that they're running 
and then you've got the IDs. So there's not too many there, is there? So that would be a very simple thing just to find those in the workshop, find them in the in-game workshop, activate them. Now, just because you're running all of the mods that they're running, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to work either because there may be some config files that you need to uh, install as well. So I think something that we often overlook that's that's important is getting involved in the in the discords of these particular mods as well and a, a big problem with this is often is when you go into the summary of a particular mod there there is no link to things like discords whereas with the steam workshop ways of doing it the way that we would do it with armor 3 and DayZ, you can but if you do a search you can come up with the different um mods Oop, oh i didn't mean to start that one Let's go over here so for example this is the worst case scenario discord and they've got a section on modding so you can go you can search go away and you can look for a problem that you might have with their particular mod and hopefully come up with it of course you could also search google as well um just just for a general one there and there's also things like the uh here we go the armor uh, sorry the infusion modders discord as well and again you can go in here and you can just search because if you're having a problem chances are many other people will be having that problem as well if we were to take something like the rhs status quo mods which are incredibly powerful they give you all sorts of uh, cool weapons and things they don't run as far as i can tell a public discord but what they do have is they do have a website that's got a feedback page um, and obviously if you go to the feedback page you can see you know how to report mods Let's see if i can find it yeah so you can support tickets here now i'm not saying you might necessarily want to report something about their their mod not working or your server not working but what you could do is you could look through and see all oh, right here we go ps5 crashing due to vehicles wow wait a minute this is something ps5 is often placed crashing in servers with rhs this could be the same problem that you've got this doesn't mean that you're going to be able to save the problem there might not be an answer yet the mod might need updating or there might never be an answer but at least you know it's not you it's not something that you've done that caused the problem has caused this server restart so that's another thing to look at um, probably one of my big biggest pieces of advice is keep things simple at first so when you first get your server starting say you first get your ps5 server starting um, and you go into the general settings say for example don't put any mods on it just run like game master and make sure you've got cross play enabled make sure you save all that and then you get the server working get used to joining the server in the workshop get everybody to favorite and then just add some of the really simple mods you know add things like where am i <laughs> it's a good one to add before you start adding the, the dozens and dozens of ones and just add a few mods at a time restart the server does it seem to be working it does right okay so we know these mods are working at the moment and then add some more there's definitely cases i think where you you end up installing mods that perhaps don't work and you get st stuck in a restart loop or something like that where you've just got to bite the bullet i think and you've just got to reinstall it doesn't take very long and because there isn't really any game modes at the moment that are super popular that you'd want to run where you need persistence you know i, I know there are um, sort of uh, life mods um where, where you do want persistence but you're probably not going to be running those when you're when you're a bit of a beginner um server owner on something like a nitrado server so if everything seems to be going wrong and you're like oh, i don't know what's going on, just reinstall the server start from scratch and again add those simple servers at the t simple mod at a time and get it working finally the final thing i say is one thing that often people forget is when you set up a particular config with a particular um, scenario id i remember you, i should say we get scenarios actually scenarios are available in the online workshop you just go to scenarios and that gives you the scenario id that you can copy um, when you are uh, what was I going to say is yeah when you set up a particular config.json that works so maybe you've set up like Kunar province and you've added in the Black Hawk helicopter and everything seems to be working make sure you go to configuration profiles and make sure you save that config um, because that means you can come back to it so for example with my configs here as you can see we've got Takistan 
uh, game master with where am I? So I could just, uh, if, I, if I could restore that, so I just restore that, and then I go to config files, and then we come down here, you can see we've got Takistan with where am I, and the relevant dependencies, Armour Train Core, Outside Train Core, they're all there. Now, the catch with this is that if there's been an update to Takistan, where it needs some different dependencies, this isn't going to work. <laughs> so I need to go back and fire up Armour, uh, reforge it and try and do this in game because it's much quicker doing it like that as well but that may well work that way so make sure you make the use of config files and when you first install your server and first open it up make sure you have you know the ba basic mods in there you know everon conflict basic mods where i'm game master with where am i just save them in there because it'll save you so much time but if you do get stuck don't be afraid to do a reinstall and start again Whew. so there we go Hopefully this has been useful. Hopefully I've um, helped you maybe with some of the problems I'm think of. Don't think it's you. And also, don't always... It, there's nothing wrong with walking away from trying to set up a really complicated server with complicated mods. If it just won't work now, don't worry about it. You know, Just install some simpler mods um, and enjoy those and maybe come back to it next week or come back to it next month. Especially at the moment where you know PlayStation has just joined... The, the family and there's loads of people I un, un, no doubtedly downloading and installing lots of mods and so the the workshop within the game is notoriously slow and uh, lots of people having trouble with that right cool so if you've got any other ideas or other things that you may well want to um, change or you can suggest to help people with their servers let me know in the comment section down below and if you found this video useful hit like if you want to see more of the same video subscribe of course I'll see you again soon